Welcome back. And now let's look at um, the image in front of us. On the left hand side, you have LED. On top is LED strip. Uh, at the bottom, you have LED lamp. On the right hand side, you have actually uh, laser which is doing something called engraving. It's actually cutting on top of wood and actually putting some marks. It can cut it completely, but it can also kind of draw very nice signs on top of the wood. But below it, you see a laser pointer, which you see a laser pointer, which is a laser light giving red laser light. Uh, again, this is something that is important for us to understand. If you look at the LED light, it's actually directionless, you know, and that's why it cannot really go very far. So within a very short distance, it already diminishes because the light produced does not have, and the light produced is not in phase. It's there, but it cannot go very far because it cannot multiply itself. Uh, LED strips, of course, we have individual particular colors. We can use specific colors, uh, for example. But again, still, uh, because of issues to deal with phase and multiplication, you know. So if you have waves that are in phase, of course, they have the same wavelength. But these will be produced at different time intervals. And again, it's actually within LED, it's difficult to just control these in such a way that they will be able, there is randomness in a way. It will be difficult to actually control this, direct it in a way that can produce something closed well as a light. So these uh, among the property or important properties of LED light is that, you know, they can be polychromatic like LED light that you see on the lamp here, meaning it has many wavelengths. It could be monochromatic, yes, but uh, the monochromaticity that we get here is not really good because of issues to deal with phase, issues to deal with randomness, which actually affects this. When you look at about laser, in order to have something that is intense, that can actually cut wood, cut metal, or used for welding and cutting, uh, you need to have something of very high energy. So remember, we discussed that energy is equal to frequency times Planck's constant, but to be able to get high frequency, of course, and also to be able to get high intensity, you need frequency, you need intensity. You can only get high intensity very much. Uh, it's supposed to be in phase so that the amplitudes can actually add on top of each other, superposition of waves. So it's like adding different waves you can only get something great out of these waves if they are of the same phase, but also if there is some sort of control so that the amplitudes don't cancel each other, you know? So when they're in phase and they are also controlled in a particular direction, that means there's something called coherence. Eh? Temporal and spatial coherence is very necessary for laser light. So that's why laser light, as you see, the difference is that here we have something that is very intense. It's monochromatic, same color, but it's also very much tiny in a way. It's directioned. It is actually compacted. You know, there is no high divergence and it can go a very, very long distance without being diminished as compared to LED light. So, yeah, these are important things to understand about the difference between LED and laser light, as we will also be able to see in our setup that we'll do in class. Thank you very much.